let's say in three years, are able to save that amount of money, right? And this is with your budgeting. This is uh, not including vacations, give or take a little bit more. Let's say you just sacrifice for three years and we're going to multiply all this by three. You were able to save, you were able to save $48,000. In three years, you're able to buy yourself a home. And let's say you not only buy, you know, the single family, but you go for a multifamily that pays for itself. So you live in one, let's say you buy a three unit, you live in one and the other two pay for your mortgage. Let's see how quickly this changes, right? So you no longer have a rent to pay. So that goes. Hey guys, how's it going? So today I wanted to go over a simple way, a simple free way for you to be able to budget. Um, I've had several friends of mine asking me um, if I budget and if I do, how do I do it? And I figured, hey, this would be a great opportunity to create a video that not only they can benefit from, but you as well. So I want to uh, just take a few minutes to walk you through the way that my wife and I do our budgeting and um, we've been budgeting for uh, let's say five five years now or so uh, and it, it's worked out for us and uh, we we recommend that anybody that's seeking financial wealth uh, start with a budget because this will allow you to know where your money is going and it will open your eyes to where there are efficiencies in the way that you manage your money. So let's get started. All right. So right here we have Google Sheets. If you sign up for a Google account, it will be free to you. And I already populated a few of the different um, expenses that we would expect. Now, I am doing this as if it would be you and another person, you know, maybe married or uh, looking to get married, something like that. Um, so for car insurance, on average, I'm thinking that your policy would be maybe 200 bucks. For groceries, uh, something conservative, just, you know, uh, looking at let's say every week you're maybe spending 80 to 100 give or take so we can do 350 for that and again this is a monthly budget um for car uh for car and gas i'm thinking that more or less you would be looking at maybe 150 for one per month just like looking at commutes on average 180 for another uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, for cell phone, for cell phone, maybe we're looking at, let's say like an average plan. Let's say you're not doing anything fancy, maybe a hundred dollars for, maybe a hundred dollars for, for two lines. Cable, I know that for Verizon, it's like $60 just for, um, internet, but let's say, uh, I don't think a lot of people have made a conversion just to, um, just to internet yet. So let's say internet and cable package deal. Maybe you're looking at like 110, something like that. Um, household house other, um, this is where we're looking at, um, you know, cleaning supplies, toiletries, um, utensils, things like that that come up uh, that it's not food. So we can do like $100 for that. Um, gas and heating. Um, for here, we can put what we average out for, which is about $100 a month. So if you take your bills or your gas bills and you add them all up for the year, divide them by 12, and... Uh, you'll get an average of what you would be needing to set aside per month. So electricity, let's say $120, nothing crazy if it's just the two of you. Um, when it comes to phones, um, let, you know, most people 
uh, typically don't buy their phones outright. So let's say two of you, you're paying, let's say $30, $30 each for your phone on your plan. So that load, that's about 60. Uh, most people um, do have student loans uh, from school. And I mean, it, it's crazy because you, you know, you have ranges of, let's say, um, 300 to like 600. I know some of my friends are, are paying quite a bit. So between the two of you, let's say maybe 350 on the low end of things. Um, this is one of the things that I don't recommend and that's having a car payment. If there's anything that you can take away from this is buy your cars outright. It, there's, it's a really bad invest. It's a really bad investment. The cars depreciate in value. They're not gonna gain more, and you're paying interest on the depreciation. It's, it's just it's not a smart thing to do. But most people do have a car payment, and I just looked up the average car payment is about three fifty. So we have two. Let's say we have two cars. So 350 for both. So for here for bills, very simple. We can go to, let's see, I think it's insert function sum, and we can sum all these up. Oh, sum all these up. And I did forget rent. Let's say a two bedroom in mass uh, around this area, Greater Lawrence, uh, you're looking at maybe Essex County, you're looking at 1,400 for a two bedroom. So these are your, your your bills for the month, just bills. All right, so let's move on to some of the wants, right? Because life is not just the bills, right? So we can take a look and do, and do some of this here. So uh, for us, this means like uh, luxury um, things that you wanna do, go on dates, things like that. Let's say it's 200, couple of dates a month. Um, for the, for the husband in this case, let's say, you know, he gets to have some, some money to do whatever. Um, the wife budgets out um, some money as well to do stuff. Um, and let's be honest, women um, do tend to spend a little bit more, more money than men just because, you know, they got to do hair, nails, all that stuff. So uh, <laughs> if, if we are realistic, we're, they're going to have a, a larger budget for the most part. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people still have like streaming services, things like that. Um, so let's say for streaming, let's say like, I don't know, I think Netflix is 10 bucks and Hulu is like 12, something like that. So give or take, right? Uh, you both are going to the gym, looking at 20 a month, something like that, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, for Amazon Prime, I think it's about like 100, 100 bucks these days, maybe. Um, so you divide that by 12, maybe you're looking at like $8, right? So these are your wants, right? So we're going to sum these up, same thing. Gonna insert that function, go to sum. I'm gonna sum these up. All right, so these are your expenses. These are your wants, okay? Now, let's look at income. So I looked up the average income in uh, Massachusetts and you're looking and th this is what we're getting right so if we take the average of the low end right because we want to speak to everybody if we do 34 plus 54 plus 51 divided by 3 46 so let's say both husband and wife make about 46 oh sorry make about 46,000 a year now, this is a calculator that calculates what that looks like after taxes and everything like that. So we're gonna do 46 a year for both. So you're really taking in about $3,106 monthly. So we can add this up for each 3106. Did we get that right? Yep. Yeah. All right, so this is your monthly income. We're gonna do the same thing, sum this up. All right, so this is your monthly income. Now, what do we have left over after these three? 
very simple. We're going to do an equals and we're going to subtract. So we're going to do the income minus the wants and minus the bills. All right. So right now you have an average of $1,692 that you are able to save every month. Okay. Now we always want to be saving, um, especially if we are looking to invest and let's say these, this couple just got married. So we definitely want to invest in a home, right? So with that, let's say, and, and again, these, these, um, these numbers are going to fluctuate depending on your situation. But even when it comes to your saving, things are going to come up. Let's say, you know, a car repair or something like that. You're not always going to be able to save all of this. So let's say we're able to save 80% of this. So how did we calculate this? We did L1, F1, and C1. We can just copy this. And we can just put a parentheses on these. And then we can multiply that by 80 percent right point eight zero all right so let's say that on average we're able to save 80 percent of what's left over after one ten bills so we're looking at thousand three hundred and fifty three bucks all right so what is it that we really have left over at the end we need to subtract what we budgeted out for savings and then we can just do a sum here to add that up to that cell where it's getting that number from. Okay. All right. So this is your, the money that you potentially will be able to save, but most likely things will come up. Maybe you go a little bit over budget on a few things and you end up spending a little bit more money. So on average, this, this couple is able to save, this amount of money, right? 1,353. So let's look at what that looks like per year. So we can just do an equal this cell times 12. So you're looking to be able to save about $16,000 a year. And that, that's not bad, right? Uh, especially starting out. Now, let's look at how things can very quickly change for you. All right, let's say in three years, we're able to save that amount of money, right? And this is with you budgeting. This is uh, not including vacations, give or take a little bit more. Let's say you just sacrifice for three years and we're going to multiply all this by three. You were able to save, you were able to save $48,000. In three years, you're able to buy yourself a home. And let's say you not only buy you know, the single family, but you go for a multifamily that pays for itself. So you live in one, let's say you buy a three unit, you live in one and the other two pay for your mortgage. Let's see how quickly this changes, right? So you no longer have a rent to pay. So that goes to zero. Now, let's say you took my advice and now you no longer are making car payments. You paid your car, you paid your cars off. Zero these out. Okay. And student loans are going to be tough. Um, I would definitely recommend that after you buy your first uh, investment property, definitely kill these because over time, that's just going to uh, kill the, the um, rate that you're able to save and we're able to invest. So we've, we've eliminated the car payments and our rent, which is our killer right here. This guy is what we want to get rid of as quickly as possible. Now look at, look, Look at how things have changed now. This couple is now able to save $3,000 in one year. Okay. So let's take that number equals just to show you multiply that. It's, it's different when you can actually see the numbers, right? So in one year, this couple is able to save $36,000 in three years, they're able to save $109,000. In two years, maybe three, you're able to invest in another property that can generate more income. And this is not a real estate uh, video, but I do want to start doing some of these so you can see um, how I analyze 
uh, deals how I'm out in the market trying to find a property that can generate uh, more income for us but this is this is the basics guys um, so my wife and I when we first got married um, we tracked every dollar and this comes from the book uh, the money makeover by dave ramsey i definitely recommend that you check that out i don't agree with everything that he says but i do agree with a lot of the stuff and for the first i would say year we really tracked down everything that we spent money on we started with a spreadsheet that was a lot of hard work so we moved on to mint okay and what that did for us was just open up our minds to where is our money really going how are we really spending this this money that we're working hard for? And it, it's like losing weight, right? Um, a lot of people have a lot of uh, struggle a lot to lose weight. And part of the reason is that they don't track the calories that, that they're taking in. But the minute you start weighing your food and the minute you start seeing those numbers, your mind becomes aware of what uh, the calorie uh, intake for all these foods and you subconsciously even start saying oh you know what maybe i shouldn't have you know that pastry that's 300 calories it's the same thing with budgeting and i do recommend that when you're first starting keep track at least for three months keep track of every single dollar that you spend your money on and after that you can move on to something that's a little bit more simple once you've gotten the hang of that which is what we do we know that our saving rate should be about three thousand dollars a month with that said we no longer track every single thing that we spend money on what we look at is okay at the end of the month did we save those three thousand dollars that we should have saved if we didn't hey what did we spend money on let's look back a little bit maybe we need to come down a bit in the things that we're spending money but that, it's, a, uh, it's an easier way for you to still remain in the range of your goals. And it's also easier um, instead of having to you know, sit down at the end of the week and tracking down, okay, where did we spend our money on? We did use Mint. It's a great software. Uh, let me know if you want me to show you how we use it or review it for you. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I definitely do recommend that you start your own budget um, and start tracking where, where your money's going. And, and above all, plan on, on investing. Um, that's how at the end of the day, you're going to build wealth. And if you want a copy of this Excel sheet, it's pretty easy. I walked you through how to do it. But if you just don't want the trouble of doing it for yourself, uh, go ahead and send an email to seer generation at gmail.com send an email here and just say hey what's your video can you send me a copy of the excel sheet and i will definitely do that for you all right guys i hope this helps you and see you next time bye